I'm going to read just a little bit about the foundation um, and then introduce our speakers today. So before his passing in 2020, Congress, Congressman Lewis created the John and Lily and Lewis Paz and Lewis Foundation to carry on his, his and his wife's passion for purposeful living. John and Lillian consistently demonstrated their love of learning and their unwavering devotion to teaching others. They were steadfastly committed to peace, to strengthen this democracy through civic engagement, to fairness and justice, to amplifying the voices of rising generations and building the beloved community. They believed in the power and importance of dialogue and collaboration, and they had unwavering com confidence in the capacity of individuals to reimagine and build a better society. People throughout the U.S. and around the world, young and old, rich and poor, of all races, ethnicities, and backgrounds are responding to a newfound sense of urgency to make intentionally different choices to dismantle intolerance and injustice in the world, in which everyone values the dignity and worth of every human being. The Foundation is committed to doing its part by continuing the good, righteous, and important work of John and Lillian Miles Lewis and inspiring what Congressman Lewis called good and necessary trouble. Today, um, we have two wonderful representatives who will present information about the Civic Rights Tour, and I'm so glad that all of you had an opportunity um, to sign up, and we'll have an opportunity to go. So I welcome today um, Stephen McDaniel and Ms. Mignon Willis. Good afternoon. I too am excited to be here and I want to thank Mr. Myers and Ms. Richardson for the work that they have uh, provided to help us to get you here today and I want to thank you for being here. Um, I also want to thank Mr. Myers for um, doing a part of the program that now I do not have to do and that is to go over the history of the foundation. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and with that being said, uh, we do have a former foundation board member here, Ms. Mignon Willis. Ms. Willis? And uh, Ms. Willis, will you be on the trip with us? Oh, Ms. Willis will be on the trip along with um, all of your uh, students. And um, so she'll be uh, traveling uh, from Atlanta to Alabama and back to Georgia with us. Uh, let me say first of all that we are so pleased that you have agreed to allow your young people to have this experience. I say many times that the margin uh, of success for most young people is to the extent that they have experiences and have exposure to things. And we are so pleased that the John and Lillian Miles Lewis Foundation is committed to making sure that young people have exposure and experiences that touch on the life of John Lewis, uh, a remarkable and just um, amazing, uh, iconic individual. Um, we really cannot say enough about the remarkable uh, humility and um, contributions that he has made uh, from a very young age, 23 years old. He was no more than seven years older than many of your young people who will be traveling on this trip. And he had the courage uh, at 23 years old to stand uh, in defiance of those who wanted to deny uh, so many individuals the right to do something as simple as vote. And so they will see and hear much of this experience on this tour. Now, I'm not sure if your eyes are as bad as my eyes and if they are, I welcome you to move forward. But I do want to share with you some information about the trip. Um, oh, the first thing I was supposed to do when I walked up here was introduce uh, our former board member, a founding board member of the John and Lillian Miles Lewis Foundation, uh, Ms. Mignon Willis. Uh, so let me just tell you something about the trip. Uh, it, is, it is a full scholarship trip. And we like to say a full scholarship because uh, the foundation is picking up the total expenses for transportation, for housing, and for your meals while you're away on this trip. 
Uh, we have invited 25 students and eight chaperones from Drew um, Senior Academy to join us as we travel to uh, Montgomery, Troy, and Selma, and back to Atlanta. You will be joining um, students, 20 students and five chaperones from the John Robert Lewis High School in Springfield, Virginia. They will be traveling down from Springfield, Virginia, directly into Montgomery, and we will join them in Montgomery and travel along with that group. They will have their own buses, uh, but we'll travel along with that group for the remainder of the trip. So we will start here um, at Drew, and then we will tour on the, uh, the 2nd of uh, April, the trip is from April 2 to April 5. We'll, we'll start here and we'll go to Montgomery. And uh, I think the next slide, if you will, will probably have more details, but uh, this one will tell you that we'll go to Montgomery on the 2nd, we'll stay in Montgomery on the 3rd, and, um, and on the 4th, they will go to Troy, Alabama, and at, in Troy, they will uh, see the birth home of Congressman Lewis, but they will also have an additional treat. They will have lunch at Troy State University. Now, Troy State University is significant because it was because of Troy State University, then Troy State College, that Congressman Lewis was introduced to Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He wanted to attend Troy State University, well, Troy State College at the time, and he got a denial letter. He could not come. So he was determined to go, so he wrote a letter to Martin Luther King, Jr., asking if he would help him to uh, gain admission to Troy State Uni Troy College. And, um, and that's how their relationship began. But the, now there is a building one of the most significant buildings on the campus of Troy State College uh, called the John Robert Lewis Hall. And they have invited the entire group to come to campus for lunch. Now, they've also asked, and I want to share this with you, that if you have juniors and seniors, they would like to give them a tour of the campus, and if they qualify, they would like to offer them a scholarship to attend Troy State University. So that's the added value uh, that we did not plan, quite frankly, but the Troy State University people have reached out to say that uh, the students on this tour from both Drew as well as the John Robert Lewis High School, uh, they will offer them a scholarship if they qualify to attend Troy uh, State University. So they'll be on campus for lunch. Thank you. They'll be on campus for lunch and then they'll leave from Troy and go to Selma. And of course, they'll have an opportunity to, to, to visit um, the Brown Chapel uh, AME Church, and that's the church where the group assembled prior to walking over the Edmund Pettit Bridge, and then they will also have an opportunity to go and walk over the Edmund Pettit Bridge. In fact, our plan is that you will actually uh, reenact the walk from the church over the bridge. And uh, so that should be a great experience. From that point, the buses will travel the historic route from Selma back through Montgomery and back to Atlanta. Uh, that will be on the 4th of April. And on the 5th of April, they'll come back here to campus. So they'll spend the night in your homes and we'll have a bus back here on the morning of Wednesday the 5th to take them to the Martin Luther King Historic District. They'll rejoin the group from um, John Lewis High School and uh, go to the Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Historic District, uh, including Ebenezer, the historic Ebenezer Church, and end the day at Mary Mack Restaurant. Now, why Mary Mack Restaurant? Because, I used, I, John Lewis was a personal friend and my fraternity brother. And so 
I had the opportunity and the privilege to travel and be with him on many occasions. And whenever he was in Atlanta and was decided he wanted to go somewhere to eat, most of the time he would say, well, we're going to go to Marybank. So we're going to give the young people an opportunity to go to Marybank. And when you go to Marymount, you'll see on the wall there are photographs of John Lewis uh, throughout the, uh, the entry hallway in the building. And at that point, our group after Marymount will return to campus and the John Robert Lewis High School group will travel up 85 North to return to Springfield, Virginia. That's the trip. Now if you go to the next slide, I can tell you some more things about it. Minyan, do you have something? Yes, yes, yes. This is the slide. Uh, we'll be staying at the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott at the uh, Montgomery Airport uh, South. That's the location, and the, the phone number is there. Um, the school will be responsible for, um, we'll turn the keys over to you, and you'll you assign the students to where they need to be, as well as the chaperones. Um, the first day is April 2nd. The buses will leave the, the, um, here. We say the pickup is at 9 a.m. We'll arrive in Montgomery by 10 a.m. Of course, the time goes back. Um, and we'll visit the Legacy Museum the National Memorial for Justice and Peace, which is known as the Lynching Museum, stay overnight in Montgomery, and on the next day, we'll visit the State Capitol, uh, the Freedom Riders Museum, the Rosa Park Museum, and the Civil Rights Museum, stay overnight in Montgomery again, and the next day, we'll go to the John Lewis birthplace, uh, We'll tour and have lunch at Troy State University. And then the bus will go on to Selma. And we'll go over to Evan Pettit Bridge and uh, the Browns Chapel AME Church, the National Voters' Rights Museum and Institute. And then we'll take that historic route back through Montgomery uh, to Atlanta. On the 5th, which is Wednesday, the fourth day of the trip, uh, we'll pick up again at Drew um, at approximately 9.30 a.m. Oh, we want to arrive at, at 9.30 a.m., so I have to give you the time for pickup uh, for us to arrive downtown. Uh, we'll do the Martin Luther King Historic District and end the tour after the Murray Mac Restaurant. Stephen, what time should the parents Um, I'll probably have to give you that time because we've assigned ourselves two hours at Merrimack and we, we get to Merrimack at, at 12. Right. That's, that's what I'm explaining. I'm saying that I'll have to, I have to get that time to you because we will be uh, arriving at Merrimack at about 12 and we've given ourselves two hours for lunch. And so the bus will probably leave Merrimack at about, no, we're gonna to get to Merrimack around 11. So we will probably leave there around one and, get back and return here about perhaps maybe 1.30, but I'll have a definite time that I'll give you uh, sometime tomorrow. Maybe I'll I call. I didn't make it clear. When we leave Selma. Yes. Do you have to leave Oh, what time will they get when they arrive back here, Drew? Okay, well, again, that's the question that I will ask the bus company. They know the travel time. So they need to give me specific times for that question as well as the time, the drive time from Mary back to back here. So I will, I will, just, I will get the uh, actual drive times and give them to Ms. Richardson. I'll have it tomorrow. I'll call the bus company and have, ask them to give me the actual 
Um, because even the, um, the leave, leaving at 9 a.m., um, it, it may be 8.30, so I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, so that's okay. So I'm that's not sure. That you want to see. I'm not sure, but we will okay. have definite times that I'll share with you tomorrow, Thank you. and I'll give you those definite times. Okay. Yeah, right. Because the important thing you want to know is what time will you arrive back here. Right. And so, so I need the bus company to tell me that travel time. But I'll have that for you. Now there are about three other things I'd like for you to know. One thing is that the foundation purchased um, John's remarkable book, um, Walking in the Wind. Walking with the Wind. And it is, it is a bestseller. We have a copy for every student, and we have a copy that we will leave here in the library, and we have a copy for a faculty member. So um, there are 27 books that I have in my car and I'll bring in. And then we will have t-shirts that we'll give every student. We really need their sizes. And that's a, a sample of the t-shirt. We need their sizes. Um, the chaperones get that too? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the chaperones will, will have the t-shirts as well. And um, we will give those to you on the bus and we will determine um, which day will be the best day to wear the t-shirts. And the final thing is we have permission slips that we would like for each of you to sign. And uh, it's a front and back document. And if you could sign one for each uh, child traveling, we don't need the, um, well, I guess we need the chaperones to sign it also because it's a media release. Uh, document. And, and what I mean by that is uh, we will have uh, media people um, who will be recording some of the trip, if not all of the trip. And we would like to get a release that, um, that you acknowledge that the trip will be recorded and that you, you will allow us to use those images. Did you have a question? Well, not a question.
then the final thing I want you to know is that the bus company is an Atlanta Public School uh, certified partner vendor. So they've been uh, approved for travel with students from Atlanta Public School. Any questions from anyone that I didn't answer that I need to come back and get to uh, Ms. Richardson tomorrow? Yes. Do you know how they'll be assigning their rooms, roommates? That's a uh, school that question. Uh, yes, yeah, so I actually just sent that email to the student email, so the room assignment has been done um, at its period of time to the hospital, and there'll be two rooms. Is that for several? So they have their own bed? And if you want to see the rooms, go to the, the website for the hotel. They have photographs of the sleeping rooms.